I'm Danny, and today I have my December and Christmas haul for you. So first I have a few things that are not books so if you want to skip these things and go straight to the books you can go to this time here. So the first thing I got was from a cousin and that was a new cover for my Kindle Fire and it's very cute. It almost It's almost the exact same color as my last one with maybe like a very slight hue difference and of course the dream catcher. Uh, the only thing I have to say is that bothers me just a teeny bit. Little white mark right there. It's some sort of manufacturer defect, I think, because it's not on the back. So that's pretty much the only thing about it that bothers me, but it's very cute and it fits great. Um, nor normally the ones like this have like a little bit of a kickstand. This one really doesn't have that much of a kickstand, but you can set it like this, but it has a tendency to fall sometimes. But uh, I like it. I really do like the design though. The next thing I got was uh, this from Owlcrate and I have no idea what it is. I haven't seen anything on booktube of other people who get Owlcrate getting this in the mail so let's see what's inside. Maybe it's a free month. Yay! Okay, It's a little card. It says, sorry we missed an item from your box. There was an item missing from my box. What was it? Oh! Oh, okay, so it was definitely the December box. It is a a necklace. Yes, it's a little am amber gem necklace, I believe. Well, amber and the dust, so of course it's got to be amber. It's a little amber jewel necklace from the amber and the dusk. I don't remember seeing anybody else's box who got a necklace. Maybe they missed quite a few people's boxes. I don't know. Okay, there we go. So yeah, it's a pretty amber jewel necklace. It's about the size of my pinky nail. It's very pretty. I'll definitely have to wear this soon. It's beautiful. The next thing I got is a little espresso cappuccino candle. It's a little candle inside of a cup. Maybe once I'm done with burning the candle, I can uh, use the cup for espresso or something. But uh, it does smell like coffee, which I'm, I don't really like the flavor of coffee, which is why my drink of choice is pretty much Frappuccinos, but uh, it does smell like coffee. I can't tell you what kind of coffee though, but I would look on the cup, but there's all sorts of different drinks on it. There's espresso, mochaccino, cappuccino, lattes, mochas. Uh, there's all sorts of different types of drink written all over the cup. So I don't know what the actual scent is, but it does smell like coffee. So the first book I have was actually a pre-Christmas gift from my mother because she found out that my main Christmas gift would not be here in time for Christmas. So, so she bought me Witchling by Yasmin Gilnorn. This book follows her three sisters who work for the Otherworld Intelligence Agency. All three of them seem to be something different. There is Delilah, the shapeshifting sister who shapeshifts into a tabby whenever she's stressed. Mallory, the vampire, who's still getting used to being undead, so I'm not sure if that's a new thing or maybe it's something she was born with and maybe it just kicked in or something. And then our main character is Camille, whose powers are unpredictable as the weather. Next I have Where Demons Fear to Tread by Stephanie Chong. I actually picked this one up myself at my local library for like 25 cents. This has to do with fledgling angel Serena who is charged with keeping this Hollywood it boy out of trouble but when he finds himself wandering into a demon club Serena of course has to go after him and the owner of the club somehow got a hold of his soul and is refusing to let him go unless Serena agrees to a deal of his. And from reading the summary of the back of this book the only thing I can think of is the quote of once upon a time an angel and a demon fell in love. It did not end well. <laughs> It's not the one for this book, it's for um, Daughter of Smoke and Bone, but for some reason, as soon as I finish reading this summary about her being angel, him being a demon, I'm like, mmm. Next I got a copy of A Dark Challenge by Christine Feehan, and I actually already have a copy of this book. This one, right here, and it, this is, I think, one of, the, I think this is the first edition of the book. So while I do like this one, I think I'm going to stick with this one, which means I'll probably just end up donating this one to either my local library or my local used bookstore. Next, I went to a uh, book fair that my town had and I picked myself up four books. This one was actually given to me by the author in return for an honest review, so I will make sure I do a video on that one 
pretty soon and it is so I married a werewolf by Kirsten Miller and she even signed it for me with my name and everything I met her a few years ago at this same book fair and then she was there again this year this has to do with Carton Griffin who is who is the enforcer for the Seattle wolf pack so he has been promoted to his dream position but there's a catch he has to find himself a wife then he meets werewolf dog trainer faith which I have to ask how is she a werewolf and she is a dog trainer or does she train werewolf dogs? It's the only question I have so far. And of course she has known Carson for a few years although I don't think he um, noticed her before and she thinks that she won't have a chance with him being a plus size girl and together they decide that they could possibly get him this position if they get married. and. They have to go through all sorts of obstacles ranging from psycho ex-girlfriends to Yorkies with shoe fetishes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought I could say that with a straight face. But I, 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 I couldn't. <laughs> a Yorkie with a shoe fetish. Oh God. Next I have Becoming Valkyrie by Brandon Cunningham. I also met this author at the book fair and got my book signed by her. And this is about our main character Valkyrie who is turning 18 but it's not just her 18th birthday it is also Halloween and after these new strangers come to her town she in she has this strange feeling of foreboding and these mysterious men bring death and destruction to Valkyrie's life and family but Valkyrie is no ordinary girl after she is plunged into the world of supernatural a part of her mind seems to unlock or awaken and she starts to remember her previous life where she was also named Valkyrie and when she, in which she died 400 years ago. Valkyrie's soul and spirit slowly converges with that of her old life and she starts to find all these powers awakening inside of her. So once all these powers awaken, Valkyrie has the choice to either save the earth or let it burn. And this is the first book in the series. Next I have Twisted Intentions by Angela S. Anderson. I also met this author at the book fair and she signed my book as well. So this is about our main character Widow who is pretty much invisible in her high school until a rich socialite moves to her town and instantly befriends her. After being rejected practically her whole life, Willow finds herself being sucked into Lena, the socialite's world, and enjoying her newfound popularity until a tragic accident sends Willow's life spinning out of control and Willow finds herself thinking who and what is her new best friend. This one was free at the book fair I told you about so I just picked it up. I know I have the first book in this series but I honestly have no idea which one this one is. I actually thought it was just a much more condensed version of the first book but it's not. Next I have Amber in the Dusk. I just received this book in my December Owl Crate and I will link that video in the description below if you want to see the other things I got in this box. Our main character Sylvie I believe her name is has always had the power of illusion her entire life and her uh, the people who raised her who I do not believe are her birth parents have always made her feel guilty and cursed for having this power and then she decides to go to the Amber City I believe it is or the Amber Capital and uh, find her rightful place in that court because she knows that the royals value these kinds of gifts when she is pulled into kind of this twisted, insidious political plot. That's pretty much all I remember about the summary. Next I have Pride by Ibby Zaboy. I received this in my October Outcrate and I will also link that video in the description below if you want to watch it. This is basically a Pride and Prejudice retelling that is told in Brooklyn with Afro-Latino characters. Next I have Shadow of the Fox. I also received this in my October Owl Crate. Our main character in this book is part Kintsu which means she is like a shape-shifting fox I believe it is and she teams up with a samurai to help uh, to find the pieces of this scroll where uh, if you get all the pieces together this dragon will come forth and give you any wish but this wish is only allowed once every thousand years and the last person who made the wish threw the world into chaos and now and the skull has been ripped into into four different pieces I believe she has one although the samurai doesn't know this he has one and then they are off on an adventure to find the other two pieces and at that book fair I also got a whole bunch of bookmarks and book promotions and a few of them actually have a like a promo codes on so you can get like a free downloadable ebook and other ones are for like series promotions and things like that so I got a whole bunch of these. 
Next I have Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Yin, I believe her last name is pronounced. Our main character is Lai and she's from the Paper Castle, which is a very impoverished part of this world, this nation. Every year eight girls are chosen as paper girls and because the stories of Lai's gold eyes has reached the king, there is now a ninth girl and this is kind of, and paper girls are kind of like courtesans from what, I'm, what I understand, but uh, this has a LGBTQ a uh, twist to the story, so I believe life either falls in love with another girl at the castle or maybe one of the other courtesans, but that's pretty much all I know about it and I am looking forward to it. Beautiful cover. And now I have the box of books from my mother from Book Outlet. So first I have a coupon for four dollars off. First I have Shadows of Night by Deborah Harkness, the second book in the All Souls trilogy and this follows a discovery of witches which is about Diana at, who is a witch very reluctant to use her powers and then Matthew who is a genetic scientist but he is also a vampire and it has to do with them and this book called Ashmole 782 and all the other witches, vampires, and demons wanting it, but Diana seems to be the only one who's ever seen it in about a hundred years. And this book is supposed to follow right after the first book. Next I have The Book of Life by Diana Harkness. This is the sequel to Shadow of Night, which is following after a discovery of witches. As I said in a few videos ago, normally I do not order uh, more than one book in a series at a time. I wait till I finish the current book and then I decide if I want to order the next one but I love the first book so much that I was willing to risk uh, getting them both and I have to really thank my mother. I never would have thought these books would have been on Book Outlet. Like I've seen a Discovery of Witches when I first found out about Book Outlet but since then I don't remember ever seeing any of the rest of the books in this series so she ran across it and remembered the name of the author because I had just finished telling her about A Discovery of Witches. Thank you mama. Thank you so much. Next I have Serafina by Rachel Hartman and I'm sad because I didn't get the cover I wanted. I wanted that pretty purple one that I'm always seeing around but this one's nice too but I really wanted that purple one. So our main character is Serafina and she's half dragon half human. Her mother is a dragon who took human form and her father is not very fond of the fact that she is half dragon which I have to wonder did he know that his wife or lover was a dragon because then it makes no sense that he would not be fond of her. I mean he had sex with the dragon for the love of God. But anyway, uh, her father is not the only one who does not have a fondness. Apparently in this world there was a war between dragons and humans and they now have some sort of peace treaty but the anniversary of that peace treaty is coming around and there's a possibility that someone wants to bake, break the treaty and cause an all-out war between the humans and the dragons again. Next I have An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. This follows our main character Isabel. She is a master paintsman in this world. The Fae are very demanding of any sort of craft because they cannot create, cook, or do anything that causes like creation without it like crumbling to bits or at least that's what I hear. And Isabel is a master painter so the Autumn Prince summons her to his court so she can paint his portrait and she decides to paint him with human sorrow in his eyes and it enrages him so much that I hear he's possibly going to put her to death or someone is supposed to get put her to death and her painting him with sorrow in his eyes could possibly lose him his crown and his life. And I hear there's quite a few lost in translation moments in here because I know from some of the other Fae books I read that they could be quite literal because they can't lie. So if you say I'm so hungry I could eat a horse, they will bring you a horse and when you say I can't eat that they'll, but, the, but you said you were hungry for a horse. I brought you a horse. So I'm looking forward to seeing that and I know there is a book from this same author that I want to read next year and I will link the video of my most anticipated reads of next year below if you want to see that and it's very short. I expected kind of a chunker of a book. Next I have Illusions of Fate by Kirsten White. Uh, our main character is Jasmine who has felt like an outcast ever since she moved from her island home and just as she moved, settles into her new home she meets Lord Finn who introduces her to the nobility life of her new home 
which has everything that she's never had before, status, power, and magic. But as Jasmine spends more time with Finn, she finds out that he has secrets. Very dangerous secrets that a powerful lord will do anything to possess. Next I have The Witch's Kiss by Kathleen and Elizabeth Kaur. Our main character in this is Maribeth, who is just tired of feeling invisible both at home and at school. Despite the fact that when she's stressed, magic shoots from her fingertips. And then she meets a very cute boy named Jack, who she starts to fall for despite the fact that Jack is partially possessed. And Mother Beth is wondering, will she lose her heart and her life to this boy? Or are old Ferris Daryl stories true and his curse can be broken by a kiss? Next I have How to Hang a Witch by Adrena Mathers, I believe. And our main character is Samantha Mathers, whose stepmother decides to move them to Salem. And immediately Sam is pretty much made public enemy another one. As Sam is, the, is a direct descendant of Cotton Mathers, one of the men who started the Salem Witch Trials. And almost immediately she starts to be bullied and hounded by a group of girls called the Descendants. And you will never guess who they are descendants of. And if that wasn't bad enough, Samantha, Samantha is also starting to be haunted by a ghost. A ghost that demands that she stops touching his things. And soon Samantha finds out that there is a curse surrounding the town that affects anyone who was attached to the trials. And now Sam must come to terms with not only the ghost, but also how to work with the descendants and stop this deadly cycle that has been going on nonstop since the first accused witch was hanged. 